Thank you, Mr. So I'd like to get started. Uh, I'd like to call to order this business meeting of Urbana School District 116. Uh, roll call, please. Member Langendorf here. Member Baxley. Here. Member Hasanaka. Member Jones. Here. Member Statton. Vice President Exum. Here. President Polowski. Here. We, we do have a quorum. Uh, are there any additions, corrections, or modifications to tonight's agenda? Uh, hearing none, uh, it's time for citizen statements. If any citizens here present would like to make a statement and public comment before the board, please fill out a golden rod sheet and hand it to recording secretary. Have any re been received yet this evening? Uh, just calling once, calling twice. All right, uh, there will be no call for an executive session after tonight's meeting. Is there a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Approval. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, student ambassador reports. Um, this is the student ambassador report from me in Dominica. Um, congratulations, UHS Choir. Um, they were chosen to perform at Foringer Hall, and they sang the song Somebody to Love by Queen. Um, basically, they're in, like, this contest to, like, against, like, other high schoolers to compete to see who could, um, perform at Foringer Hall, and a lot of people voted, and they ended up winning. So, congratulations to Miss Park, the choir teacher, and her choir students. Um, <laughs> Indigenous Peoples Day was October 9th, 2023. Um, this day recognizes history and culture of Indigenous people. And although this is not a federal holiday, it is important to su so sh show support to all people. Um, in New York City, tribal chiefs and other Native people celebrated this holiday at Randall's Park. And there is an event in Phoenix where people watched Indigenous films and fried bread for Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, there's going to be an Urbana High School tailgate, and there's, um, so for the tailgate, the um, student council is putting it on, and it will be this Friday. Um, student council will be collecting donations and sharing information about student council at the tailgate. Um, it's from 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m., and other clubs will be selling things at the tailgate, too. And then there are two more football games in the football season, and then it's over, which is this Friday and next Friday, which is senior night. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys can come to that. There will be a Latin American speaker in town um, who is a guest speaker for students at um, UHS. Um, from the U of I, talking about the language Quechua. Um, many indigenous people in many countries speak this language in South America. Quechua is a native language to the countries Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, and Argentina, etc. Um, the speaker will also be speaking about how important culture is, and I think this would be a good chance for students to um, learn about like other cultures or learn more about their own. Thank you for your time. Next up are our administrative reports. Uh, first up tonight is the 2022-2023 auditor's report. Uh, so we'll bring up Heather Powell from, uh, from Forbes. into the microphone. So I'm going to um, go through just a little bit differently. I don't know we're going to even pull anything up on the screen just because you can never read it anyway and you have everything in front of you. So, um, But I am going to just kind of walk through this um, letter that says Forbes report to the Board of Education. That's the one I'm mainly going to spend time on. I did give you all the slides that you're used to seeing, but um, like I said, they're so small. I will refer to them a couple of times. Um, and then I'm not going to go through the big you know, main report because that's just as I'll mention, there's really not much that changed with that. So I just thought I'd do it a little differently this year. So, um, and this required communication letter covers kind of, you know, all the different types of things that I wanted to talk about anyway. So 
So first and foremost, we did issue an unmodified opinion um, on, well, I guess not on unmodified on, on this financial statement, but um, it is in accordance with GAAP, except for, as we mentioned before, that you did not adopt GASB 34. We've talked about that lots of times. Um, but it is in accordance with government auditing standards, and then we also um, audited in accordance with the uniform guidance, which is um, the rules over your federal awards, and we didn't have any findings with that um, federal federal um, audit, so nothing to report there. Um, as I mentioned, there really weren't any changes within the financial statements. There weren't any new standards that you had to adopt this year. Um, there was one for governments, but it didn't apply to you, so you didn't have to adopt that. So really that should look pretty similar to it has in, in past years. Um, we also um, complete the AFR, the annual financial report that you're required to submit to ISBE um, in the region, uh, Regional Office of Education, and so those will be filed um, once they're approved tonight. Um, page two just really talks about the government auditing standards and the uniform guidance responsibilities that I already mentioned earlier. So page three is really where um, some of the required communications are listed. Um, your significant accounting policies are described in footnote one of the statements. Um, and again, this, this makes reference to the, that uh, gap departure and the circumstances behind that. No unusual policies or methods of accounting, no alternative accounting treatments, really no estimates um, that we needed to disclose to you. As far as financial statement disclosures, um, a couple of things I did wanna mention, and you can see this when you do look at the slides, but um, as far as the fund balance numbers, and just um, remember that these are on the accrual basis versus the cash basis that you're used to seeing, but everything is um, positive with the exception of the tort fund, so good job there um, with all of those fund balances being positive. There was one, one fund that was um, over budget and that was tort, but everything else was um, all within, within budget. The revenue, um, there's a slide on revenue and we've talked about this before. That's really um, some differences in timing related to when you receive grant money as well as tax money. Um, just a reminder, we take everything you get through August 31st and bring it back to June 30. So that always causes some differences in what maybe you're used to seeing or how Katie budgets. Um, the working cash, 4.7 million last year and they're down to 2.6 million at the end of 6.30. So good job with that. And then the only other material communication we have is um, attached here. We, what we used to call the management letter, it's all included in here now. And I just wanted to mention that we were able to remove a few this year and we did not add any new ones. So there shouldn't be anything that you would have, anything new that we added. So um, that's also always great news. And then the final thing attached here is just the management representation letter that management signs uh, to us, letting us know that they you know, were open and honest with us about everything. So any questions on any of that or the financial statements? We certainly appreciate um, Katie and her team's help. Everything went really smoothly. You're my only district that didn't have to extend. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, lots of staffing issues this year, not on our end, on the district's end, so. Uh, board members, any questions? I guess for our new board members and for the public who may be watching, this is a, a yearly process. We, we go through to have an external firm analyze our, our, our budget and expenses to, to make sure it's, it's compliant with, with state and, and federal regulations. Any, any questions? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah this, is, this, is, this is, you know, improved. Uh, I mean, last year's was a good report too, but this is even better, so a great job. Thank you, Heather. Thanks for your time. Our uh, <coughs> second administrative report is uh, McKinney Bento and, and the homeless report. Is, is, is Dion? Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you fine. Okay, I'm gonna um, <clears throat> share my screen with the presentation on it. Um, uh, 
Okay. All right. Can you see my cover? Okay. All right. So, um, so this is the uh, Urbana School District 116 McKinney Vento um, Services and Community Partner Relations. Um, so I'll just kind of run through um, the the statistics, and then if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, so historical homeless data from 2019 to 2024. So we're looking at a six year summary of McKinney Vento. Um, and as you can see, the numbers have gradually increased. Um, and so it was projected that uh, by the end of 2024, there would be a little bit of a decrease to 66 uh, families. But what I can tell you as of this school year, we actually have served well over 70 families um, through the McKinney Vento process. Um, so that is just slightly off um, as of now, but uh, this was the these are the pro uh, projections right here from 2023 to 2024 that there'd be a little bit of a decrease. So recent homeless trends um, <clears throat> between July and September of 2023, um, which is about a three month period, there have been upwards of 65 McKinney Vento common forms filled out, submitted to Regional Office of Education 9, entered into Skyward, and entered into the, the shared district spreadsheet. This indicates a current 1.55% homeless student population within our school district. So schools with the highest amount of reported homeless students were Thomas Paine Elementary School, Urbana Middle School, and Urbana High School. And keep in mind that some of these are siblings as well. Um, so they're families that are um, that may have older students at the middle or high school and then younger students at the elementary level. So here's a um, kind of a visual where you can see where we're at in terms of uh, reported homeless students. So the most common causes, and this is just, um, you know, informal data collected through conversations with them or, you know, in talking with caseworkers. Um, so inability to afford monthly rent payment due to loss of employment. And some of this came during the COVID pandemic. Some of it was thereafter. Credit reports and rental history refre reflecting major delinquency or eviction. So what a lot of families don't realize is that evictions stay on your rental history for up to 10 years, and it makes it really hard for you to move um, into another complex if it's with a company. So I've been working and trying to get some private landlords on board um, you know, to, to take in some of the families and work with them. Natural disasters. So um, several families last year lost their homes to house fires, um, water damage, mold, pest infestation, things like that um, are also causes of uh, loss of home. Districts resources. Um, so <clears throat> when it comes to housing, um, we make referrals to shelters um, and, and service providers in the area, including Cunningham Township, Regional Planning Commission, Housing Authority of Champaign County, and Urban Restoration Ministries. Um, for food, uh, they, we have the Tiger Pantry or the Tiger Market, uh, which is located at Urbana High School. Um, and then there are several other soup kitchens and little free food pantries. In fact, there's like 42 in our county, but in, Champ I mean, in Urbana specifically, uh, there are about eight or nine. And then clothes, shoes, school supplies, and personal use items. Um, so project that I started last year, continuing this year is Mrs. Mitchell's Closet. And we currently have three locations in Urbana, one at Thomas Paine Elementary School, one at Urbana Middle School, and one at Urbana Neighborhood Connection Center. So I'm often running to grab clothing items, hygiene supplies, um, school supplies, et cetera, for families in need or students in Urbana School District that need things. The Wilcox Red Shoe Funds, I don't have access to those, but the school social workers do. So oftentimes, if I don't have something available um, and vice versa, if the social workers don't have something available um, or they don't, they're not able to take the family shopping, then they'll refer them to me. And then, like I said, vice versa, I'll also refer them to their school social worker uh, because they have access to those Wilcox Red Shoe Funds. Referrals to the 12 discount stores and giveaway hubs in Champaign-Urbana. So there are 12 of them, and that would include places like um, the, the I call them low-cost or no-cost stores, so like your Salvation Army, uh, Goodwill, Twice as Nice, House of Karma, so on and so forth. So there's about 12 of those in the Champaign-Urbana area. 
All right. Um, so Urbana School District 116 and Cunningham Township have a partnership and uh, our Cunningham Township um, office homeless liaisons name is Kyle Patterson. Um, so the steps for getting support from Cunningham Township um, go as follows. So students, family in indicates homelessness, and this often happens either at registration or in a conversation with a social worker, teacher, or administrator. And then uh, we have the referral forms. It's a Google form that gets completed and sent to Cunningham Township. So the Google form is submitted to the Cunningham Township liaison, Kyle, and then um, a caseworker from Cunningham Township is assigned to the family. So if they qualify, if the family qualifies to receive referrals for emergency sheltering, that's always the first step. And then at times what happens is if I don't hear anything or if a family calls me back and says, hey, I haven't heard anything yet or have you you know, heard anything, can you follow up? Then I'll give a call or I'll shoot an email over um, just to check with Cunningham Township to say, you know, hey, just checking to see if you got this form for this family. Um, is there any progress? Uh, but I, I do know that funds have been um, kind of scarce. It, it has been, been a little bit of an issue um, getting some families in here. So I like to check and, and follow up on that. Um, so that's pretty much how that works, how those steps go for uh, the families getting support. Any questions? We're going to begin a question. Yeah, it's a couple. Hi, it's Sherry. Hi. Um, question, at first you said 65 families and then you said students. Are, is it students, 65 students then? Um, so yeah, it's 65 uh, students because okay. we're only counting the students in the district. Um, okay. But you know, obviously, I I say family and student interchangeably just because you know it's the whole family that's homeless. But yes, yeah, so it's 65 students in the school district that we're counting. Right, because you had referred that they could be siblings as well, so there could be several in a family. Um, another question: Our regarding the Tiger Market, which I've been working on. Um, Parents can contact us and, and come to shop in this situation as well. So if, if you could encourage parents to contact Ms. Hernandez over at the high school or um, we'll try to arrange a time when we can help them shop. Yes, I do. Okay. And I'll continue. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. Hello, I got a question or two. Can you uh, just explain what is the McKinney Vento funds and who qualifies for that? Like, do you have to be fully homeless and for what period of time? Or can it just be housing threatened? You know, like you are in a situation where you don't think you're going to make your rental payments. And if you had a little boost, you might be able to get through and maintain your home. Um, yeah, good question. So actually, um, unfortunately, and we would love to have that be the case, but unfortunately, you cannot be housing threatened, you have to actually be homeless. And by um, law, McKinney Vento is just a set of laws that basically protects families and provides services for families that are homeless. Um, so for example, one of the biggest protections um, that it has, and one of the that also creates a lot of um, kind of <laughs> uh, difficulty or challenge on our end, is transportation. So what happens is um, there are um, families, like let's say, for example, a family was attending Urbana schools previously uh, before they became homeless, but now they're living in Champaign because they're doubled up. They're living with another family. Well, by law that protects them, which would be McKinney Vento, um, they still can be transported over to Urbana. Now, of course, you know, transportation has also been scarce. So that creates a little bit of a challenge trying to figure out, you know, what route we can go if we have a route to go to get them there. But, um, but yeah, so there is just a set of set of laws that basically protects them and, and, and provide services for families that are, um, homeless through the school district. So, um, you cannot be housing threatened. You do have to be homeless, but homeless under McKinney Vento definition is very broad because you can be doubled up, which means that you are living with another family. So you don't have your own residence with your name attached to the rent or the mortgage. Um, you could be living in what's considered an unsuitable um, uh, living situation. So if you're residing in a garage, which has happened, um, a vehicle, or um, a hotel or motel or um, 
outside, those would be all considered forms of homelessness. So even if you have a roof over your head, <clears throat> excuse me, like a hotel or motel or something like that, it is not your permanent residence. So it is considered, you're, you're then considered homeless. So how long does it take to like process somebody? So what I'm saying is if you say you know you're gonna be evicted next Tuesday, can you start the process in advance or do you have to wait till next Tuesday and then it might take, does it take six weeks to get everything going or, you know, I mean, how quick are you? Um, well, <laughs> well, for me, once, you know, once they contact me, I immediately contact Cunningham Township or, um, you know, what's the other one? I forgot the name of the other one, but, um, you know, basically the, the services in our community, um, I contact them and let them know, you know, hey, we've got a family, I submit the Google form. And then from there, it's their responsibility to get that process started. It normally happens within a couple of days, but again, you cannot be housing threatened. So you have to be considered actually homeless. So meaning that you're already doubled up or you're already living on a train or whatever. And in terms of the time to process, um, that family from their end, from like Cunningham Township's end or whatever, um, normally it takes a couple days for someone to receive a phone call, um, you know, if they're, you know, if they have a high volume of people coming in. But like I said, there have been times where it's been a little bit longer and then the family will call me back and say, hey, I haven't heard anything yet. Have you heard anything? Or can you reach out to them? Because I'm trying to get in. I'm getting ready to be, you know, it's getting ready to be really cold or whatever. And then I'll call or I'll send a follow-up email just to check on you know the progress of things but it normally doesn't take a very long time to get them processed it normally takes a couple days or so and then they get placed with the caseworker and then uh, my, my last question is uh, the part of the reason I put this on the list of things to talk about was uh, there were some questions about uh, school supplies for homeless students so are those 66 some students getting their school supplies through McKinney Vento um, or are they not or how's that working is it just you have to be homeless on the first day of school in order to but if you get homeless later on then you should already have your supplies I guess or what's the story there no um, so I keep a lot of school supplies. Um, I, I go to Walmart and buy them. I go to Meyer. Um, people donate them to me because they know what I'm, what I'm doing, um, both, you know, in the schools and in the community to make sure that our kids do have school supplies. So um, we get them from a variety of places, but we make sure anytime somebody marks on that form, that is a McKinney Vento form, the services they need, if school supplies is one of them, then I reach out and make sure that they do get their school supplies, whether it's through Mrs. Mitchell's closet, or whether it's through um, the social workers and I say, hey, you know, you're taking this family shopping. Do you also have, you know, some school supplies or, you know, what have you? But yeah, so all of our families do get school supplies. And um, we know that some of our families do not have transportation to get to the school. So there are times where I take it to them um, and they're, they're kits. So they're in, they come in these little drawstring bags. Um, and if they have more than one child, then I normally bring, you know, several bags or I double up the school supplies kits inside the bag so yes all of our students do get the school supplies one way or the other uh, board members student ambassador any, any more questions I was gonna make a clarifying comment about transportation something dr. Mitchell said about our our transportation woes but Kim had her finger on the mic so I didn't know if you were gonna say that too okay yep <laughs> So um, as Dr. Mitchell pointed out that um, we have been having some issues uh, with some of our McKinney-Vento students with transportation. And so I just wanted to kind of uh, provide a clarifying comment about that. So um, first student is required to, um, as part of our contract with them, provide uh, bus services to our um, students that are homeless, whether they live in Champaign or Rantoul or Thomasboro or wherever. Um, Unfortunately, due to the driver shortage, it's been really difficult to get that started because um, we have been using our drivers um, to really just run our regular route. So we're still working with per student on that. Our backup has always been um, cabbing students. So we've used uh, cab companies. So well, unfortunately, due to COVID, um, another um, one of the other major uh, competitive cab companies went out of business in the last year or two. 
And so um, Unit 4 and um, Urbana schools are all kind of vying for the services of just uh, one or two very uh, limited cab companies right now, which has also caused some um, issues with getting some of our students who are outside of Urbana to schools. So I know Dr. Mitchell has um, helped in a lot of uh, different ways. I know Ms. Maldonado, um, all of our liaisons have really um, spent a lot of time. Um, Mrs. Webster was helping at the beginning of the year, uh, really trying to get the kids to school um, that are outside of Urbana because of these transportation limitations. So I just wanted to clarify that. It is an ongoing issue and we're continuing to work with First Student on that in case you've heard that or um, have families ask you questions about that. So. I did receive a positive update from first student earlier this week or well, it was probably in the last week they have six new drivers that are supposed to be starting very soon which I think to me meant, means in the next week and then they have two additional drivers that are in the queue um, there's a lot of steps to get new uh, bus drivers completely certified with their CDL and all the training that's required so um, that's really encouraging that we can um, have some additional assistance for homeless transportation Uh, one last call for questions. Um, so for people who aren't homeless yet, but they're home threatened, are you able to provide any resources to those people or like give them any resources or do you not have contact with those people at all? Um, so actually, yeah, I've provided um, resources to people. So, I mean, for me personally, <clears throat> um, you know, even if a student is not, homeless but they're in need of things like i've you know made sure that kids have had um socks underwear pe clothes um made sure that you know um if they just need food for their family because you know some families are not homeless but they still need help with getting food or fi figuring out where the soup kitchens are um so you know i mean there's been a, a wide variety um and believe me it goes like this where i'm you know on my desk phone and then my cell phone rings and then i'm on the cell phone and i'm like hold on a second let me you know so trust me we we yeah, it's it's homeless families but it's also families that are just you know uh in a financial bind um and are needing things so uh you know no i have contact with families who are homeless but i also have uh, contact with families and, and students that are not homeless um, but just have some other challenges and not just homeless as you know because also you know there's so many other things as well academically um, there may be some challenges and and so I'm in the meetings for those or question you know answering questions about IEPs and 504s and such so um, so no it's not just the homeless families I'm, I'm happy of course to work with homeless families and helping them secure um, you know, the, the things that they need, but also other families that are not homeless. I'm definitely in contact with a lot of them as well. Yes, thank you. Um, if members of the public uh, wish to donate, I guess, to the Dr. Mitchell's uh, closet and the help with, with assistance to families, how would they go about doing that? Um, thank you for that question. Um, so and I and I also don't want to take any credit. It's it, it's not that it's a huge huge deal, but it's Mrs. Mitchell's closet. Um, just because it's not it's not about me. It's uh, dedicated to my mom and her work. Um, and so for Mrs. Mitchell's closet, there's an Amazon wish list um, that's out there, um, and it's actually on the CU Schools Foundation webpage. Um, so they have ways that you can donate to both Champaign Unit Four schools and to Urbana schools. When you donate, when you click the link to donate to Urbana schools. Um, then it goes straight to um, our Amazon wish list for Mrs. Mitchell's closet. And it gets sent straight to, those items get sent straight to Urbana Middle School. And here pretty soon we'll be in the process of updating the list to take some things off because some things we have a lot of and then some things we need more of. So we'll put some things on there that we need more of pretty soon. Um, but yeah, so there's an Amazon wish list. Um, I do have some family members, some friends that knew my mom that, you know, go out and they just buy things and they're like, hey, you know, I I, my children are adults now, but I was in the store. I saw these size seven eights or this, you know, this coat. Would you like it? And they buy brand new stuff. So it doesn't have to be from the Amazon wish list. It can just be from a store. Um, some people have, you know, given me cash or checks or what have you. Um, and then I go buy book bags. I go buy, you know, stuff from Dollar Tree for hygiene products. So there's a, a variety of ways to donate to the closet. 
Thank you. I think we can make sure that link goes out in our board uh, report that goes out on social media this, this week. So, so thank you very much. And any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell, for joining us, even though you're not, you're under the weather. Thank you. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All, right. All right. Thank you. Um, we'll Moving on to our action items, we have a consent agenda consisting of the minutes to the September 19th business meeting, the September 22nd district teacher parent advisor committee, and the October 3rd study session. Uh, we're seeking advance approval for a September bills and checks because we won't be meeting next week for, for fall break. Uh, we have a list of uh, personal items that were in our packet. Um, we have approval of the hazardous areas for transportation. We have a res uh, resolution authorizing and directing sale or dismissal of personal property. Um, these are textbooks, chairs, tables, storage shed, electronics, games, and books. And we are seeking approval for a new activity count uh, for the UHS class of 2027. Uh, is, does anybody wish to remove any of these individual items from the consent agenda? Uh, hearing none, a motion to approve the consent agenda would be in order. A motion to approve it. Second. Any further comments or discussion? I just have a question about, a question about the ha um, hazard areas, if I can get some more information about those and how they were determined or Yep. Um, would you like me to answer that now as part of this discussion? Or Please. Okay. Um, the ha IDOT hazard areas are determined through an evaluation process. There's a form um, that you submit to IDOT. Um, it has to do with the, there's like a ranking of points that you go through as you fill out the evaluation. It has to do with how many intersections the students have to cross, if there's rail railroads involved. Um, and then um, from there, if it scores a certain number of points to be determined to be a hazard, then you submit it to IDOT. And then going forward, what that allows you to do is that um, students that are transported within the 1.5 miles are then still reimbursable on the transportation claim. Um, so it expands um, what we can claim as claimable transportation costs to be within the 1.5 miles for students that are determined to have been uh, in a hazard area. Uh, any other further comments or questions? Roll call, please. Member Hasanaka? Yes. Member Langendorf? Yes. Member Baxley? Yes. Member Jones? Yes. Vice President Exum? Yes. President Pulowski? Yes. Um, we do have individual action items. First up are our gifts. Uh, Cornelia C. Otnis from Urbana donated $100 to help support the UHS fire trip to Disney. The following donated $100 each to sponsor the Winter Guards regional competition entry. Smith Burger Company, Stan Sports World, and Urbana Rotary. Uh, Dan Ditchfield from Horace Mann donated $300 for program supplies for the mentor and community involvement coordinator at Dr. Preston L. Williams Jr. Elementary and Urbana Early Childhood. And Urbana Rotary donated $1,000 to go toward a stipend for the Urbana Interact Club sponsor. Is there a motion to uh, receive the gifts and send out acknowledgments and thanks? So moved. Second. Yeah. Any comments or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, that two is approval for electricity sales and purchase agreement. Um, so uh, Katie, can you provide some context for us? Yep. So this is following up on the presentation that Calpine Energy came to give, was it in September study session, I believe? Um, so the uh, approval of the sales uh, and purchase agreement tonight will allow me to then sign on whatever strike date we decide to sign the ultimate contract. So the pricing that was provided in the contract that was in the board packet is a draft, but we, we haven't seen the rate shift very much. Um, so it should be around that amount um, and that will lock in 50% of our energy pricing um, for three years. Right. Is there a motion for the floor? Is there a second? Second. Any further comments or discussion? Roll call, please. <coughs> Member Baxley? Yes. Member Jones? Yes. Member Langendorf? Yes. Member Hasanaka? Yes. 
Vice President Exum. Yes. President Pulowski. Yes, 12.3 uh, is an action to approve IGW programming and concept planning proposal for this is uh, for the, the sixth grade center at the former Wiley School. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ibertini, I guess I'll yeah. some context. Yes. So um, as I mentioned last week when uh, Scott Walker was here in the audience, um, when we were discussing the uh, sixth grade center, uh, we have already um, done quite a bit of the phase one piece. The program development um, started uh, basically in August as soon as the board um, after the co-chair presentation. So uh, we've kind of held on to bringing an agreement forward um, until we were um, a little more clear about uh, what uh, would be happening with the uh, Wiley School space. Um, and now that, that that decision has been made, um, IGW did present us with, um, well, we've had this for a while, <coughs> but it, it, we just kind of held on to it until we knew, had a better idea of what the scope of the work would be. Um, and it does align with um, sixth grade center. Had the board voted for something else or done something else, then we would have uh, asked Scott to uh, bring us back something different. Um, this is pretty much a standard um, agreement with IGW, um, nothing different um, than what we've done in the past. We've got program development to start. Um, phase two is concept planning. We've pretty much done a lot of these tasks already um, in the program development section. Um, and then on to preparing final documents, bids. Um, this amount that we see is very much in line with what we um, also had for the Thomas Paine project. Um, thank you. Is there a motion for the floor? I move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any any comments or, or, or discussion on, on, on this item? Let me turn your mic off then. Um, <coughs> total phases one and two totals 29 million. Where do we come up with the extra? That, that I think is 29,000. 29,000? Oh, 29, 29, oh, yes. Well, that's yep. that's for the professional services, not gotcha. for the project that's itself. Why I need better glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it, I, I do. Frankly, I, I, when I read this the first time, I saw the same number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, twenty nine thousand. I, I guess I just want to just to follow up though. There will be additional phases of IGW professional yeah. services. This is just pro program and concept planning, so we're not even really into final design or anything like that. So there'll be additional agreements that'll come before the board when those phases begin. This is typical for any big building project that we do. Mm -hmm. any, any further comments or questions? All right, a roll call, please. Member Hasanaka? Yes. Member Langendorf? Yes. Member Jones? Yes. Member Baxley? Yes. Vice President Exum? Yes. President Pulowski? Yes. Um, our last item tonight is 12.4 uh, professional services agreement with RSP and Associates LLC. They were here last week to describe uh, the professional service they would provide us to help us with uh, redistricting. Is there a motion for the floor? So moved. Second. Any further comments or discussion? Sure. So when we discussed before it was this uh, fee plus potentially travel from wherever they live to here. So where do those guys live? Where are they from? Um, they're in Kansas City. Oh, so any idea what the estimated price of no. four or five visits might be? Um, unfortunately, there is no easy way to get here um, to Central Illinois from that location. Um, they're usually they use usually work with um, Chicago area schools in Illinois. I'm course they work with multiple states but in the state of Illinois they've mostly been working with um, collar counties um, and people north of I-80 so uh, they're looking for a creative way um, how they're going to get here when they need to come for the in-person visits so we did include travel um, but then we would work that out with them separately yeah. as someone with family who lives not terribly far from there it's often faster to drive the x hours than it is to deal with two planes but it's certainly more comfortable to, to fly mm -hmm. even if you're taking two planes 
and that is that's kind of what we talked about that's why we didn't put it in the agreement because we're not quite sure what they're going to do for those um, interactions when they're here in person right. any other further comments or questions uh, roll call please member Baxley yes member Jones yes member Hasanaka yes member Langendorf yes Vice President Exum? Yes. President Pulowski? Yes. Um, there will be uh, calls for several, unfortunately, future special executive meetings surrounding student discipline, uh, several tomorrow uh, during the day and evening, as well as uh, we've scheduled a November 29th uh, meeting at 6 p.m. for our uh, executive session for um, self-evaluation. Uh, superintendent's report. Okay. I think John has us ready to go there. So last night, um, several of you joined us for academic monogram. So thank you, um, Member Langendorf, uh, President Pulowski, and Member Jones for joining us. Um, it uh, Academic monogram for those listening is um, one of our opportunities to celebrate academics. I know we um, have lots of ways that we acknowledge students throughout the year, and this is one of those events that focuses purely on um, our scholars and their academic achievements. Uh, it was a great night, great program. Um, the new administrative team has jumped right in and is doing great things. Um, this is a recognition for students um, in grades 10th through 12th grade. Um, so when you're a freshman, then as a sophomore, you're recognized for the year before. So it kind of goes like that. So um, great turnout, a lot of student participation. So yeah, ap academic monogram, big success. Um, Tiger Marching Band this weekend pr uh, uh, performed in the Viking in Invitational in Danville. Sorry, I can't talk. I'm eating salty peanuts. Um, the band uh, placed second place in Class 4A. Color Guard, um, outstanding in Class 4A, and outstanding percussion in Class 4A. Um, at the top is the Winter Guard. Um, and they actually won their um, section. So congratulations to Winter Guard. Um, so yeah, TMB, congrats. They keep doing great things. The UHS Choir, so Paulina already shared, uh, will be performing with Foreigner on October 22nd. So exciting. Just to thank everyone who voted and to show you how important your vote was, we only won by 100 votes. So I know my family probably contributed to, I don't know how many of those, but I made everybody vote like every day four times. So, um, and, but I'm sure everyone was doing that. So congratulations to Ms. Park and the choir. This is a photo of them from um, Academic Monogram last night. They also win $500 um, by, uh, because they won the contest, um, in which they will again be putting toward their trip to Disney um, coming up. Remember the um, raffle, all of that kicks off this Thursday, um, and that link will go live pretty soon. So there'll be another opportunity for all of us to uh, still participate in helping them fundraise. So the concert is October 22nd at 7.30, so go choir. Um, UMS Cross Country, uh, Austin Ogowski, former board member Brian Sun, is headed to state. So Austin placed 10th at sectionals and earned a spot at this weekend's state championship. So we will be rooting Austin on from afar. And congratulations. Yeah, he is tall, yeah. Um, CU Pride Parade uh, was September 30th. And um, here's some great photos of some of our young people who participated in the parade from the Up Center of Champaign County. And our uh, youth group and our students won best youth participation in this year's uh, CU Pride Parade. So congratulations to all of the, I think UMS and UHS, um, we maybe had some elementary students there as well. UECS celebration. So we're really looking forward to this. So on Thursday, November 9th, um, we are going to be celebrating 50 years of early childhood education in Urbana. Um, so in 1973, the Urbana Early Childhood Program began and um, has thus far impacted hundreds of children, probably thousands in our community. Um, we also are going to be celebrating the 10 year anniversary of being in the new Urbana Early Childhood Center. 
So we'll have activities related to 50, and then we'll have activities related to 10 years. So we plan to invite back um, some former teachers, um, folks that are local. Uh, we've asked News Gazette if they will um, hopefully um, share in uh, kind of talking about 50 decades of impact and what that has meant to Urbana in a um, hopefully upcoming fabulous article, but we're, we're working on that. Um, so yeah, congratulations to uh, UECS and all the work that they've done in the community for the last 50 years for our three, four, and five year olds. We'll share more information about that as it gets closer. Um, we've been reminding parents um, and guardians and all those who work with our youth that next week is fall break. So I know lots of parents have been um, making plans for uh, what they're going to do with their young folks. If you need some ideas, just let us know and we can help you. The Teach for Urbana cards are back and um, out, I believe, right Angie? Are they out to people? Um, so again, we want to thank the uh, UHS PTSA and the We Love Urbana group for bringing back this phenomenal and um, really exciting uh, teacher appreciate uh, pre teacher staff and volunteer appreciation opportunity for our folks um, we also want to thank all of our local businesses who um, continue to support our community and make the appreciation cards available so we have a these are are these good Angie you want to say these are good for more than a month right some of them are one time and yes so can actually they're front and back Kenita yes. Faye special shout out to Kenita Faye Kenita. doing a lot of the legwork um, so she and I talked about um, just having the cards be good for a semester so that we're not um, purchasing as many cards and sending them out and I think people would kind of forget to use them by for the month and they'd be really sad and so um, this is good for fall semester and then we'll have something new for spring awesome. and this has been a great um, morale booster. We have other districts reaching out to us to see examples of the cards, and I hate giving away our secrets, but um, <laughs> it, it is really appreciated by staff and by volunteers. So thanks, okay. Kanitha. Yes. Um, upcoming dates several of us will be joining the NAACP Freedom Fund Banquet this weekend, and at the end of the month, we have student led family conferences coming up. And then I know we have a couple FOIAs. Uh, yes, we do. So um, here are the completed FOIA requests. Uh, one's from Catherine Casey of Science of Reading, Illinois. The names of the universal core curricula currently used to teach reading in kindergarten through third grade. The grade levels, these are used if there are multiple reading curricula. The dates the reading curricula were purchased. And if there are plans to purchase different literacy curricula in the future. Uh, the second is from Laura Siga of Construct Connect. Bid tabulation for the asbestos abatement awarded bid and anticipated start dates if determined. Uh, board reports. Does anyone have any board reports tonight? I guess I have a friendly reminder to please get Lori um, your availability for upcoming uh, needed to schedule uh, expulsion hearings. If there are no further board reports, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Uh, we're adjourned. Uh, thank you. <laughs>